All right, I bit the bullet and bought the parts, guys. I got a, a walker tailpipe, a walkler muffler. The uh, It looks like it's a factory fit. This is a uh, Quiet Flow SS. It's got the bracketry on it. I got it off Amazon. I called the muffler shop to get an estimate to put these on, and they wanted, guess, 814. Um, I called Monroe Muffler. They said we can't get a get you a quote because of the new state regulations needing factory exhaust. I'm like, okay, that's what I want, a factory quiet exhaust. These should be direct fit. It's a 2010 F-150. Um, but got, getting it off from Amazon, you know what you get. It's not just Amazon. It's any shipping. You get dings and dents. So I gotta fix this. It looks like they dropped it. Not a big deal. Dawson's got the tiger out here. How you doing? And they're shooting across the street. Well, we skipped about two weeks, I think. Um, we got into the snow, so I never got to my exhaust system here, but I took this to the shop to Mavis and Monroe and I got a quote to put the pipe muffler clamps Of course the hangers are already on it. Would you believe the cheapest was eight hundred and fourteen dollars? plus tax and I said whoa um so I decided to do it myself. I went on Amazon and I got a Walker uh, 54856 and a Walker 55621. They look to be original fit, but as usual, upon shipping, um, it's handling problems on either end. You see the dents in the pipe. And so I want to, what I want to do first. It's straight now there's also a dent here and a pretty big dent there but it shouldn't affect performance and see they peen the end over and on the uh, on the tailpipe this is actually in pretty good shape um, and the outlet I don't care about but this uh, we got a nice weld on there the hangers look right but what and I ordered clamps and they're two and three quarters, so they should fit. And so we did that right. And I've put Walker exhaust on before, and I've had pretty good luck with them. So our clamps are okay. I got out a little mic in case we need it. But what I thought I'd do is, before I attempt to cut off the existing exhaust system, remember we're at home, we don't have a lift. I gotta crawl on the floor because I want to get this back as round as possible and I want to dry fit them in here first to make sure they're gonna fit. I had an exhaust expander and it was a I don't remember if it was a Mac or a snap-on, but I one of the um, legs on it broke, so I took and sent it out to the tool truck and never got back. One of those deals. They didn't have it in stock, and they'll get me one, and they never got me one. So I'm out of that. I probably could have still used it. had a couple, you know, rubber-type bands on it. You put it in here, and, brrr, and it makes the pipe bigger. So I don't have one of them. So we're going to struggle. Um, I've got, like I said, I ordered this on Amazon, and I got it delivered for $150 for the... The four pieces, the two clamps, tailpipe, and muffler. So for $150, i am going to suffer and save that money. And that would make Dawson a good Christmas present if I spent the balance of that on him. And we struggle and put this muffler on ourselves. Um, but the truck isn't real loud. It's, um, you know, this is the rear back here. And what there is, I tried to show you in that previous video, but it's hard to get under there. Is the tailpipe would have hooked in there? Um, the bracket broke off the back and that went down and banged down the road and it kinked this and it left a crease and it cracked. 
that's all it's wrong with. It's not rusted out. But uh, I want to see if I can get this back round again. And I got a car dolly or, you know, auto body dolly and different things that I can shape this as round as I can without getting another exhaust expander. But I want to just dry fit these to see if they fit, to see if I have to expand one or the other. I don't. I, I've done this in the uh, automotive shop before and had access to an exhaust pipe expander. Look at that. Check that out, guys. So... We're, we shouldn't struggle too hard on this, um, but at home here, I don't have the lift. I don't have good facilities, you know. It's cold. The garage is full of crap. I can barely get my truck in here. And to get it up on a jack and on stands is quite a deal. Usually, if you let your axle drop... It'll go down a few inches, and that'll give you a little bit more room to fit this up over. But because this is short right here, I have a feeling I can get this in anyway. If it's a long pipe, are the ones that you can't fit and get them up over. Um, but we just tried that on the muffler. It fits on this end. So I don't think we have to do any more with that. But this end, looks like they dropped it out of a helicopter. Bang that up pretty good. Um, we'll fix it this a little bit and I probably should have a dolly or something for that or a block of wood anything keep it as round as possible this is not the proper way to do it I'm calling it the redneck way of doing it it's about 24 degrees right now and yeah see that's not round at all it's got a ding on this side and a ding on that side so i'll have to get it as round as possible and the factory one that's under there i believe it's original equipment still we've got a hundred i think it was 166 on this 166 dollars an original exhaust this had the highway miles on it when I purchased it. And uh, it's a 2010 F-150, so it's doing pretty good. I get this fairly round. It looks pretty round right now. All right, I got this safely up on a jack stand. That'll get this side a little bit higher. It's kind of tight in this crowded garage here. Um, we've got a grinder, a light, a couple batteries, and an old jigsaw. I think I'm going to, or I'm sorry, sawzall. I'm going to see about cutting off this tailpipe and muffler first. All right, I just sawzall that bracket in front of the muffler here. I'll get some pliers and work that out. They kind of rust inside that rubber, and I, that's why I knew that probably wouldn't come out. And then, now I want to cut the back of this muffler, because I'm not going to be able to get the muffler and tailpipe out as one unit. So, it's really hard to get the camera down in here. Alright, um, I just wiggled the muffler in that back bracket and it moved. So now, I think I'm just going to cut the front of this pipe off. I'll cut it extra long right now. So it's shorter to the muffler. There's nothing in the way. And that'll get a bunch of weight out of here. through there. Let's see. 
Uh, almost. Counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Maybe we'll support that a little bit. And I got the jack stand up front there so our pipe won't move. Binding on me a little bit. Hey, I got it, guys. Oh, it weighs a ton. Let's see here. Let's see if it'll slide off the back of that. It's almost. The tailpipe's kind of in the way. There we go. Here's a muffler. See the Ford number? Get this thing out of here. That weighs a ton. So the back of this muffler is cracked. And so the uh, exhaust was leaking out of there. And not terrible, but I don't like fumes under a vehicle. And now we got to work on this bracket here a little bit. See, it moves. This one might come out. But I'll probably have to get some spray on them. And when I, I don't want to cut this side, obviously, because I want to reuse it. But I think if I get some pliers and spray, no reason we can't reuse that. And you heard the tailpipe fall. So that should be fairly easy. I think that's almost off. I did just cut my thumb on something. Crawling on the ground. I used to work in the garage. I did some exhaust work and that well, was nice. We had a pipe expander. I could make my own pipes, tailpipes, things like that, intermediate pipes and bump them out. <laughs> kind of make this uh, a whole lot easier. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Ugh. Oh yeah, look at this. Pretty heavy hangers they are. That's half inch. Almost five eighths. That's half inch anyway. Okay, so this this is fine. I think I'm just gonna spray that so the next one will go right on there. Now what we're gonna do is we gotta work on this. And I don't know what size that was or anything. Look at that thing. And I can't saw us all through there without damaging this. Um I don't know how tough it is. Like I said, this is an old blade. If I can get behind it and just cut the whole bracket right off, because I don't know. And there's no head left on this bolt to grind on. I'm going to be throwing all the sparks over there. So I think I'm going to try cutting this first. See if I can get more pressure on this jack stand. One more click or not. I don't know. Yep, there we go. That'll keep the pipe from rattling around. Let's see if I can just cut that. Oh, wouldn't I give to have a lift again? Alright, I got through that. And it's probably a good thing we're getting rid of it because it's pretty beat. Ugh, it looks like it's got a tack weld on it. Because it's not even budging up here. So, I don't know if it matters, but I can't have this left on there. So I'll probably get maybe an air chisel up here and knock on that, see if I can get this to spread open, get that clamp off. Well, there was one little spot weld on the top here. And just give it a tap and it come right off. So uh, now what we're gonna do is I'll probably go out and take the tailpipe off which it dropped down so it should just slide right out of that donut and then I need to heat this up now I've got a little bit of acetylene no I've got a little bit of oxygen but I'm out of acetylene so we can't use a torch but I probably can use a propane torch or I could cut real close to this pipe 
And then I could use my air chisel cutter on the inside to get that out. But because it's got a split right here and a split right here, this pipe is designed to open, I think. So I'm going to just heat it up with a torch, a uh, propane torch, and see if that's enough heat to work this pipe out. Let me go get that. Alright, I ended up heating that. It expanded. I heard it pop a little bit. But the pipes are still pretty good shape and they were clamped, so that's pretty tight in there. Still pretty hot. But uh now I need to uh like make a slice down on the inside to make it smaller, or I need to complete heating of it and then get a pair of pliers, big pliers on there and just start working it. But normally if you make a slice down the center. This piece of pipe missing, it'll just come right out. I got the air chisel out, and first thing broke a spring on it. That's two in a row. I just ordered one, and we just broke that one. I don't know why these are breaking. This is a Mac. Um, the bit I want to use is this little ripper. That little cutting edge, and if I can come in like right here, there's this slot. If I can line up with that slot, I can go in quite a ways. And this goes in about three inches and peel that pipe out. That's what I'm gonna try to do. The other slot, there's one up here. If I did that, I could probably see it better or I might do both of them. But once I get that started, it might come right out. Wouldn't that be great without damaging the outside of that pipe? And then I can use a torch, whatever. We start on the bottom here. A lot of times the vibration knocks enough rust off. Well, it started to cut it, but the spring's not in there, so I'm not able to do the proper pressure I like. When I get started up here, I need a swivel on the end of the air hose too, would help get in tight areas. Ooh, that moved. You see that, guys? The whole pipe moved. Let's see what we got here. No. The whole thing went in a little bit. <clears throat> Not loose enough yet. Let's try the bottom again I guess yeah you saw that move if I had to spring in this I could control it better I'll turn it down a little bit the ice on top of the truck is uh, thawing out a little bit and it's dripping on my head see that move the whole thing's moving so how do we get that out of there um, we try the heat again. We heat up the outside of that. Let it expand a little bit. Put it on hyperlapse again. Time lapse. Well. Rather than monkey with that anymore, I think when they did the spot weld, it welded that pipe inside of that because I cannot break that free. It just, uh, I don't want to damage the outside of that pipe. So I think I'm going to remove the pipe so I can take it out and work on it on the bench. I think, but if you look at these bolts, they don't look too healthy. Probably have to heat them up and see if I can back them out. They look to be, oh, about a 13 millimeter. Well, I got one of the bolts out. It's kind of rough shape. The propane torch works. You just got to, you know, have patience with it. If, as you can see, it's getting cherry red. And what I like to do is tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen. But I want to get this pipe out of there because 
it's so low to the ground and cramping it's I could probably get that pipe disconnected but if I could stand up here at the bench it's gonna be a whole lot easier I'm using a six point socket um, I'm probably three um, 13 millimeter but 13's a little sloppy because they're rusty so I think I'm gonna beat a half inch socket on there I don't know, I probably won't reuse these bolts, but i got to get them out of there. I don't want to hurt the thread so I can reuse the flange, and I'll just get some bolts. Yeah, that sort of fits, so I'll beat that on there. See the sparks from rust. They should use stainless and everything. They're cheaping out, you know. I was going to get the impact, but they get a little bit rough. Sometimes the vibration of the impact gets the rust out nice, but other times it'll snap it right off. And this way I can feel. Uh oh. Yeah, there's not much of a bolt there. So I'm going to keep heating it. This is a half inch. I'll probably get maybe a 12 millimeter and beat it on there. All right, perseverance. We got it out. The uh, the bolts are a little rough. Not much thread left. And the head of it is pretty much gone. Six point socket did it. But the old propane torch worked good. The uh, threads in the in the pipe are, are good. And so we don't need to do anything there. But on the pipe itself, you see where that spot weld was on the clamp. It went all the way through that pipe and got the next pipe, you know, the inside pipe. So that's what I'm struggling getting that out of there. And uh, but now I can stand up and put it in a vise, get a hold of it like a he man, and get that out of there. All right, here's the next morning, guys. I give up on it last night. But the uh, here's the back of the muffler. You see, this is cracked, it's real bad. So that's why I didn't want to wait till spring, I didn't want this to fall in the winter months and have a chance of banging my fuel tank or something. So, here's the inside of this thing. The hangers are strong on there. See how big that muffler is. And, uh, but the outlet, it just, when that tailpipe dropped, it just must have vibrated enough and cracked this. That's the reason we're doing this project, but here's a problem I had last night. I don't know if you noticed it on the film, but I was using the air hammer, and I had the different bit on, the one that's uh, a slicer. And I was trying to make a pierce down this pipe so it would cut it and then it would, you know, it'd be smaller and I could just pull that out. Well, what happened is apparently it slipped off, went out and broke this tip right off the spring. And guess where this chisel went? It went boom, four feet. I took off the, uh, the the front pipe and it's way up in the converter but that bit went way up into the converter so I took a magnet and shoved a magnet up in there to try to grab it I could hear it but I couldn't reach it there's my pile of tools but I had this magnet on a spring it wasn't long enough to touch it I had this magnet that extends out to about four feet. That couldn't touch it, but it wouldn't bend the corner. So I hooked the, uh, with some uh, tape there, I hooked onto the air hose and shoved that in there. And the problem with that is it's got a brass tip on the end of the hose and it would make this rattle sound where I thought I was on it, but it wasn't. So I'm gonna hunt up two things, either something soft like a rubber hose and something about four feet long that I could tape to that magnet and see if I can grab that chisel and pull it back out. It's all the way up behind the converter 
and the pipe goes forward and down and then back up and then it wise off so if i tap on the pipe i can hear that fitting in there and i was like oh man and i also use my welding um clamp or welding um magnetic 90 degree clamp there and i stuck it up there and i wiggled and i could kind of jiggle it but it doesn't want to follow it so the next thing is an extension on a rubber hose or i might get my inch and a quarter vacuum hose and hook it on to my large shop vac and see if i can just put that up in there and it might have suction enough to grab it we'll see i don't know well i finally got that out of the pipe and it's a chisel end bit and like i said the get it in focus the end of the spring broke on the chisel and it shot it in but i think what really caused it was the end of this chisel get into focus the end of this chisel has a little lip that was under it that broke off so it probably just shot forward and that's what broke the tip off so i think combination of these two parts is what made this long hassle here but i got it out of the pipe so now i'm going to start getting the uh the actual pipe out of the front pipe I'll show you see the pipe still inside there and this is a slotted open pipe so I'm almost ready to get that out of there I'll put it in the vise and it should come right out well our snow blizzard our Christmas snow blizzard has started we got about 20 minutes ago the wind started picking up the snow's coming starting to come in the garage i got the door open here i got the uh, pipe out as you saw i want to wrap this project up because i want to do a couple other things before the the main snow and ice comes um i want to dry fit these parts i don't know if you can see them yeah i think so pretty good um and make sure they all fit well before i climb under there and they don't so this is the rear of the muffler. Let's see if it fits in. It, it does. Perfect. So that's good. Now the front of the muffler, it's got that longer pipe on it. This is still a little warm. I warmed it up with a torch and got it nice and round. And it's got that funky slot in it and it goes up to here. See how far it goes in there all the way so we're way up into here so i can use my two and three quarter clamp on it and we're all set and the difference i was worried about on the donut gaskets is that there's a ball on the end of the old ones and it makes it hard to fall out of that donut but these are long and so that should slide in that should slide in this should slide in this should be pretty quick install. The only thing I have missing yet are these bolts. And the threads are real nice on it because I heated them up, and, you know, so I didn't disturb anything. And uh, I might put the old ones back in just for now and measure the length and get a couple new ones. Um, I do have some buckets of bolts. I got to see if I got the right size, but I just want to get this going because this storm has started. Um, the other thing I like to do it'll smell a little bit all exhaust have some kind of factory oil on them you know for shipping rust whatever but i like to grease the fittings a little bit so when i get down under there they just boom right in and uh remember i'm crawling on my back and i, I you know i don't have a lift here so um i want to make it as easy as possible so i think i'm going to slip the tailpipe up over first and then go in and probably put maybe two jack stands under here to support the muffler so it stays up fairly level look at the snow coming here it's kind of pretty and it's going to get warm so the problem with that is we're going to get a little bit of rain out of it later and right now it's right at freezing but it's climbing so i scraped the driveway down and as you can see here some spots are almost bare but when that rain hits it down there, it's just going to be a sheet of ice. So we're going to have to sand and salt and be careful here for the holiday. All right, I'm going to 
try to do the tailpipe, fish it from the back up over, and you watch and tell me if I'm getting in the right spot, will you? Oh, look at the snow coming in on my tools here. Not liking that. Let's see. I don't know if I can reach it for this angle. Let me get my parts down in here. Let's see what we got. Can you see that? I'll probably get right in the way. Ugh. Crawling. Don't we love it? Move this over. So, I think this should fit easily. And we got one hanger up here. It's got to fit in. And one hanger back there. So, let's see. It's got to fit up over here. I've got a jack stand in my way. Probably my head's in the way, too. I like this winter hat, it's real heavy, thick, you see, it probably looks funny, but it keeps my head warm. All right, so, look at that, let's see if they line up. Sometimes you gotta bend these, or they got bent during shipping. Let's see what we got. Ooh, that one's just about started, what do we got here? Looks like it's about a direct fit. Like I said, I've used walkers before. That one's in an inch. This one's in an inch. Check that out, guys. So our tailpipe's a perfect fit. And if I keep it down for the body an inch or so, I kind of want a little downward slope on it because any water, you don't want to keep it in your system. And Eric O., on South Main Auto, he has shown us that if your mufflers don't have a little weep hole in it where the water can escape, then uh, they tend to rust out quicker. So I'm going to check this out. If there's no little weep hole on the bottom, I might drill a little eighth inch hole in it. It makes sense. Because I know this Walker muffler is not going to last as long as the original equipment did. Because... It is, uh, what is it, 12 years old and 166,000 miles. It's been a good exhaust. It's been pretty quiet. And I want it quiet again. So let me go get some more parts here. All right, I got anti-seize on the clamps and bolts. I found two new bolts for this front pipe and a bucket, brand new. I put some anti-seize on them. And... Everything's going to be a 9 16 to tighten up. I got my clamps ready. I greased the inside of the pipes with, um, you know, just some chassis grease. And it's going to smoke a little bit when it starts, but it's going to go together a lot smoother. So let me climb under here and see if I can get this assembled. All right, let's see what we can do here. Here's our hanger. Goes right here. I didn't lube that up like I should have. But it should go in there. And it may go forward enough if I did that first to be able to have it hold the weight of it. Yeah, that goes in good. And yeah, we got an inch or two back here. So let me crawl under there. See if I get this together and rotate the muffler at the right angle. Oh boy, it's tough when you're crawling. Now we gotta see where this lines up. Just about there. And the pipes are touching, so I gotta bring my tailpipe forward a little bit. And the muffler back a little bit and oh yeah let's see how easy that slips together Ooh, look at that my 
probably should have put a mark on it. I'd like it in there an inch and a half. But I think if if the front of your hanger is sticking out and your tailpipe hangers are sticking out, yeah, which they are quite a bit, I think I'm in there far enough. And greasing it helps. And then I want to turn my tailpipe up as far as I can go without hitting the body. And then I could probably go ahead and start my clamp. Fits right on nicely. You can't see that. It's got, I put anti-seize on these, I don't know why. Probably won't be taking it back off. Hopefully for not another 100,000 miles. And when you're putting your clamps on, just think of where those studs are so that when you crawl under here to inspect something, you're not bashing your head on them. So turn them around, you know, so they're out of way. And these are fine. I'm going to keep it about a quarter inch from the end. And I'll go ahead and snug fit them here. So those are on. And now, see, we got plenty of room on our donut. And then I'll probably move you around this way. I'm going to get that. Well, that's pretty good. I may not even need it. Let me move you around here so you can see something here. Probably see more than I can. Ugh. Um. What's in the way here? Oh, we have snow on our lens. Hold on. All right, I hope that's a little better. Now, let's see if I can get that pipe in here. And I've got my bolts in there, so I take them out. Wonder if our length is gonna be good on this. I hope so. I looked it up myself, so I've only got myself to blame. But I thought it looked about right. And setting that up there. Look at that. Can you see it? You should be able to. Looks like a perfect fit. And so I should be able to work my way around and do it from that side. And I shouldn't need this jack stand. Right out of here. Those donut hangers are the best. I remember the old style were terrible. It was just a rigid system, and this is, you know, flexible. Ugh. I only got a foot of room here. All right, I used to be thinner too. Okay, get a light up here so it's not blinding you. See how good this will go. There's our spot weld hole. And uh, that'll be on the top this time. So I might rotate that down. Put it on this way. So that if I have to touch up something I can. I must have dropped my pipe here. One of these little fingers are bent in a little bit. I'm going to give it a little love tap. We don't have the best of conditions. Do I sound like a whiner? I think this is still well worth it. Saving approximately $550. So I will suffer, get cold, and crawl on the floor with my Carhartt welding coat full of holes to save that kind of money. And that's best applied for a Christmas present for Dawson. He'd appreciate that. Let's see. Should get on there. Oh, get down. Look at that. Get on there. Oh, yeah. Check that out. That's an exact fit, guys. So, now, let's set my clamp up there. Oh. 
struggling. Let me know in the comments if uh, you guys tried doing it exhaust at home without using a cutting torch or any kind of heat source other than a propane torch, not even map gas, and uh, how well you struggled at it. The old clamp was way up here on the edge of these, so I might do something similar. I don't think I need to clamp at the very edge there. Now, as I mentioned, you see how these studs stick down? I've seen uh, Eric on South Main Auto, he'll take and cut them off. But I've got a lot of room up here, so I think I'm going to turn it away from the drive shaft like this and clamp it this way. Yeah, like like that so I don't bump my noggin next time I climb under here for some reason I don't know if you can see it but I probably have to adjust the camera but I'll get my clamps at approximately the right angle so that I can tighten them up when we're ready and then we'll look over this way it's hard to get everything in the right angle but let me see if you can see that. All right. <sighs> Grunting and groaning. Here. So, what else we got to do is see if we can get our, our pipe up in there, get a ratchet, which I had. Where to go? I don't see it. And I want to tighten our front pipe up first. Then we'll adjust our tailpipe. And I want to keep it approximately an inch away from the uh, box of the truck so it doesn't hit and rattle. Let's see what we got here. Check that out. Get that up there. Turn our angle. Look at that. Oh, direct fit stuff. I love it. That should work good. Wonder if I should put a washer on that. I think I will. Hold on. Alright, I got two washers. Got one on there. Let's see if I can find the other one. Look at that. I love this direct fit stuff here. I found this on uh, Amazon, you know, walking. So I want to tighten this up. And this flange is stationary. So this pipe has to go there. I'm not going to use any air tools or electric ratchet on this. Not necessary. Let me bring this in about even. I can't even see that bolt, but I have to crawl over on that side. Bring this flange into touch. There we go. And uh, I don't know if you can even see it, can you? Yeah. This truck's pretty good shape underneath for a New York truck. I got it uh, from Pennsylvania. I don't know. I'm sure they still use salt, but in pretty good shape under here. That's why I bought the truck. I've had it, geez, I don't know how many years now. Six, seven, I don't know, eight. And it's a 2010 a New York truck. Normally you don't do bolts by hand. Usually a torch. Let me snug them up. Yeah, I got a six point socket on it. Put it wasn't on there all the way. Yeah. That's good enough. I don't need to kill them. And then now I'm going to go back 
I don't know if you can see, I'll have to move my light. But uh, I don't want to tighten up the clamps until I'm happy with the tailpipe. There, that might work. So I'm going to shoot to the back. And once I like it, I'm going to tighten up the two muffler clamps here. One for this intermediate pipe and one for the back of the muffler tailpipe. And sometimes what I like to do, see the muffler is higher than the frame. It's higher than the rear axle. So I know that the angle is proper, but the tailpipe can drop or raise and I don't want it going uphill. I'd rather have a, a couple degree angle down for moisture. And then I don't want it to curve up in the air and hit the body of the truck. So sometimes I take like a one of them uh, spun noodles or a rag or something to put in there because when you go to tighten your clamp, sometimes it'll turn uphill, you know. So let's see what I can find. I got an old shirt here at work. We keep all of our clothing, Dawson's clothing, they end up being my rags. I'm looking at this pipe and it's level. So I don't like level. I want to turn this down. Right now I got about an inch and a half away from the body of the truck. So let me put this rag in there and keep what we got. Like, let's see what we got here. That's pretty good. And I'll put the rag here so it doesn't move. Now I can tighten up all my clamps, the two clamps, and this project will be finished. And I want to take, as I mentioned, Eric O suggested you have a little weep hole in the back of your muffler. I like Eric O's channel, and this does not. So I'll be getting a 1 8 inch drill bit, and I'll drill a little tiny hole here, and uh, on his uh, one of his latest videos, he did that because the muffler was turned and the outlet pipe was on the top, kind of like this one is. If the outlet pipe's on the bottom, I'm sure most of the moisture would blow out. I hate to drill a hole in it, but I hate this muffler to wear out prematurely. So let's see what our clamp looks like here. That looks, our pipe's all the way up in there. I think they're good right now. And getting this clamp moved up towards the top here means I'm not going to bash my head when I get under here. I do that enough. Might have to get a deep socket on this. Yep, I certainly do. I'll be right back. I gotta get a deep 916. And then this project will be finished and I'll be happy. We got this blizzard coming here and I wanna get all my vehicles prepped. Might have to run to town, get some diesel for the tractor so I can plow. And let's see if we got a deep, 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 where is it here? Nine sixteenths deep. Uh, Sorry to be the delay here. Um, seven, half, nine. There we go. Is that it? Yep. So, uh, I don't know. This is tough. But, like I said, mention in the comments if you tried exhaust work at home and how well it turned out, if you struggled or not. And uh, what I'm going to do is get this down off the jack. I'm going to start her up, make, check, make sure there's no leaks. And it's obvious there's no leaks on this. And there's no guesswork on this one. I just want to get these tight enough. Usually I run them up with an impact, but I'm not going to on this. This is a nice fit. You got a little grease popping out. So that when I do start, it's going to smoke a little bit. 
There's a 54856 was the muffler part number. 2010 F-150, and I got the old 5.4. Just change your oil on them, guys. Often. Keep your old timing chains in good shape. And then, that's pretty good. That doesn't wiggle. The rag is still in there. And I'm going to keep this clamp about a quarter inch from the back. That's a little far forward, so I'll move it backwards just a little bit. There we go. This clamp can be straight up because it's higher. I wasn't sure I was going to get this pipe apart without having a acetylene torch. I was a little worried I'd have to take it to the shop anyway, and I was like, no, I don't want to get into that. For $550 savings, this muffler and tailpipe should last me another five years. And like I said, I'll check a little research on Eric Owens over to see. Maybe I'll even send him a message and see if he recommends it. Because I don't have to do it today. I could do it the next oil change, you know. But you want to get that water out of there. The moisture. So that's nice and snug. Snug as a bug in a rug. So, hey guys. It sure looks pretty good. Let me show you. We've got our intermediate pipe, new bolts, ANICs, clamp, muffler, uh, tight here, clamp, tailpipe. See the rag up there that keeps it away from the body, so I know I'm not going to get any rattles. And this thing hardly even moves anyway. So this is a uh, well, good job done, guys. I don't want fumes under the vehicle. It'll tend to rust it out and make you sick. So remember to uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next project. And I hope it's going to be easier. And uh, thank you for watching. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Take care, guys.